Step five of our five steps of hypothesis testing is to make a decision about the significance of the results. We have been testing a null hypothesis to determine if there is a statistically significant difference between means. So let me tell you more about what I mean when I say there is statistical significance. We are testing a null hypothesis that says there is no difference. If the evidence against the null hypothesis is sufficient, we will reject the null hypothesis. You reject a null hypothesis if the sample mean is outside of the critical value fence that we established. Or you reject a null hypothesis if the probability value is less than 0 0.05. Or you reject a null hypothesis if the 95% confidence interval around the mean difference excludes zero. The null hypothesis says there is no difference between the sample mean and the population mean. If you reject a hypothesis that says there is no difference, what are you saying? That there is a difference. Rejecting the hypothesis of no difference means that we accept the hypothesis that there is a difference, and that difference was specified in the alternative hypothesis. At this point, it's important for me to stress something about the words that we're going to use to describe our decision making. We will never accept a null hypothesis, although we may reject the null hypothesis. Why do we not accept the null hypothesis? Because the null hypothesis stipulates that there is no difference between the sample mean and the population mean. However, we know that any time you measure a sample mean, it will be different than the population mean. If we go out to enough decimal places, there will be a difference. Therefore, we would never accept the hypothesis that there is no difference. We could accept a hypothesis that says there is a difference. We will accept an alternative hypothesis, we will reject a null hypothesis, and we will fail to reject a null hypothesis. Those are the options. And when we reject a null hypothesis, we are establishing that we have exceeded our criterion for statistical significance. Here's what that means. Statistical significance means that the difference between the sample mean and the population mean is not just different, not just significantly different, but statistically significantly different. Significance means that that difference was not due to chance, but the evidence suggests that that difference was due to an effect. We have therefore rejected the null hypothesis, the hypothesis that stipulated there is no difference, and we have instead accepted the alternative hypothesis, the hypothesis that says that there is a difference. Let's apply this with our baby weight decision. Let's start with a distribution of sample means. This distribution has an x-axis, and on that x-axis we can write a number line that represents potential means. The population mean is 7.5, which is right in the middle of the distribution. Next, we established a criteria for significance. In the lower portion of our curve, the critical value to the left was negative 1.96 standard deviations, which corresponds to a value of a mean of 4.95. This is established based on an alpha level of 0 0.05 which places 2.5% of the scores in the lower tail and 2.5% of the scores in the upper tail. Examining the upper tail, we have a critical value to the right, which is also defined by either a standard deviation or a critical value that we look up in a table. In this case, it corresponds to a mean of 10.10.
based on an alpha level of 0.05, putting 2.5% of the scores in this upper tail, in addition to the 2.5% of scores in the lower tail, which collectively add up to 5% of the scores. Therefore, the tails represent probabilities less than 0.05, and the body of the curve represents probabilities greater than 0.05, which would include 95% of the scores in this distribution. And now we place our mean of 11 from our Siberian sample on the number line. And we find that it has exceeded that upper critical value to the right. It is over the fence. The observed value of 11 exceeds the right critical value of 10.1, there is a statistically significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean at a p of 0.05. And now let's wrap this up with our baby weight example. The sample mean is 11. The population mean is 7.5. With the criteria of p less than 0.05, less than five times in 100 would we randomly select a sample with a mean of 100 by chance if the sample and the population mean were truly the same. And now we must write up our findings in APA style. Here's how I would write up this particular test. A study was conducted to determine whether infants born in Siberia differed in weight from the world population average of 7.5 pounds. A one-sample z-test was used with a sample of Siberian babies with a mean of 11. Babies born in Siberia weighed statistically significantly more, on average, than the world average. And note that I have been using X bar to stand for the mean of a sample. However, in APA style, we write up the sample mean using a capital M. And we do this because it is easier to type a capital M than it is to typeset the X bar. And those are the five steps of hypothesis testing. We have walked through these steps, the same steps that we will use for every hypothesis test that I'm going to teach you. But before we go, there is one more important thing that we need to consider. We just made a decision about a population mean and a sample mean, saying that they were statistically significantly different. But there's something else. We could be wrong. We could have made an error. Therefore, we need to wrap up this discussion of hypothesis testing exploring two possible errors that we can make with decision-making using hypothesis testing.